In previous lessons in this section of the course, we've spoken quite a bit about the SUM function in Excel. And there is good reason for that. The SUM function is by far the most common function that you'll most likely use on a daily basis. Now, due to this, Microsoft have a little feature that makes it even easier for us to execute the SUM function quickly, and that is called AutoSUM. So if you take a look at the spreadsheet just here, you can see that I have four small tables of data. And these simply represent Q1 to Q4 sales for three companies, Gaggle, Gramazon, and Oracle. Now, maybe what I need to do here is I need to add up the totals for both the column and also the row. So we want to see the totals for the company for that particular quarter, but we also want to see the totals for January for each company. So we need to basically do a sum calculation in these cells just here and also these cells just here. Now what we could do is we could click in the first cell and we could say equals and then we could do sum select this cell range close the bracket hit enter and then we could copy that down and then we could do exactly the same thing over here we could say equals sum we could select the numbers that we want close the bracket hit enter and then we could pull the autofill handle to copy that across now we could do that for each of these tables but that is pretty slow particularly if we have a lot more tables than we have here so let's get rid of this and take a look at a much quicker method. Now, if you notice, if we go up to the formulas bar, we have an auto sum button just here. And when we click the drop down, notice that not only can we utilize auto sum for performing the sum calculation, we can also use it for average, count, max and min. But the difference here is that with sum, we also have a really useful keyboard shortcut. And you can see that in the screen tip just there, Alt plus equals. This will automatically add up all of the selected cells. So what we could do here is I could select everything, including the blank cells, press Alt equals, and it's going to perform all of those calculations. How cool is that? I could even do it on multiple tables at the same time. I could simply make my selection, hold down the control key, make my second selection, keep the control key held down, make my third selection, then press Alt equals, and it's going to perform all of those calculations. How quick was that? This is such a time-saving utility. Now it's not quite as quick if you want to utilize it to do average count max and min because we don't have that helpful keyboard shortcut. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. So if I was, let's do, let's delete these out. If I wanted to do the average instead, I could select all of the cells, go to auto sum, select average, and it's going to perform that calculation. So it's still a lot quicker than typing in the formula. We just don't have that uber quick keyboard shortcut. Now I'm going to undo that because I actually want the sum in here instead. So don't forget about that auto sum button and also the keyboard shortcut. Now I want to finish off just by showing you a quick instance where auto sum doesn't quite work as expected. Now, AutoSum is built to add up numbers that are either above, below, or to the side of it. So if we delete out all of these totals again, and maybe instead of January, February, March, I had in here uh, 2021, 2022, and 2023. So maybe we have years in there instead. Now, Excel doesn't know the difference between a year and a number that we want to add up. So when we select our cell range just here and press Alt equals, it performs the calculation. It doesn't include the years in the calculation, but it's showing this little green triangle in the corner of these cells. So what exactly is that green triangle? 
Well, when you see a green triangle, it basically means that there's some kind of warning or error on the cell. And you'll always have this little warning triangle next to it. If I click the drop down, it's telling me formula admits adjacent cells. Now it's giving me this little warning because it's recognized that there are numbers above my selection. And those numbers in this case happen to be the dates that I added, the years. So basically Excel is recognizing that I have numbers next to my selection that I haven't included in the formula. It doesn't realize that these are years and I don't want to include them. So it's giving me this little warning telling me that the formula emits adjacent cells. Now in this case, that doesn't matter. I don't want to include these years in these formulas. So I can simply select the cells which have an error, click the yellow triangle and choose ignore error. So if you see that little green triangle in the corner when you're working with your formulas, just remember that that is always some kind of warning that you should investigate further. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.